Okay, so in the previous example, we saw the traditional way of handling pagination using the previous and next buttons. In that example, everything related to React query just kind of worked out of the box. Passing in the page param to the query key literally did everything for us. Now in the case of infinite scrolling, it's not as straightforward, but if you understand what's the use of each change that we make going forward, it should still be pretty easy to understand and I'll try my best to keep things as simple as possible. So first things first, I'll copy everything from the with query component and paste it inside a new component called with infinite query. I also need a route for this inside main.jsx. So I've created the route here and now let's create the component. So this component right now is exactly the same as the with query component. Now to handle the infinite scrolling pattern, React query provides a separate hook called use infinite query. Let's import it and use it instead of use query. So I'll just replace this with use infinite query. The structure of the data that use infinite query returns is slightly different from use query. The data now is going to be an object with two important properties. First one would be pages, which literally gives you an array of arrays. Each array will essentially be a page with all of its items. The second property is called page params. It's an array containing all the page params used to fetch the pages. So in this case, it will have one, two, three, and so on. Since the param that we'll be using is going to be the page number. Now inside the query key, I don't need to pass the value of the page anymore. That's because in the case of infinite query, a single cache entry is shared for all the pages. So even when I scroll and get to the next page, there won't be any new separate queries for that page. Since it's all going to be stored inside one cache storage, the query is also going to remain the same. We'll need access to two more items from the use infinite query. First one is the fetch next page. This function is going to be responsible for fetching the next page of items. Second one is has next page, which is a boolean flag that will let us know whether we are on the last page or not. There's one more item called is fetching next page, which is similar to is fetching, but it will not be triggered in the case of a background refetch. It only gets triggered when you're trying to load more items in the case of an infinite query. We'll also have to pass in the initial page param. So in our case, since we start off from page one, I'll set it to one. I also don't need the placeholder data anymore. So I'll just get rid of it. And this page is not required anymore. One final thing that we need to add to the infinite query is a function called get next page param. The function determines if there is more data to load and gives us the information to fetch it. Now this function will have two arguments. The first one is last page. So the data from the last successfully fetched page is what is going to be inside this first argument last page. The second one is going to be an array containing all the pages that have been successfully fetched so far. I'll just call it all pages. And for now, I'll just console log both of these items. If the return value of this function is null or undefined, the has next page boolean flag that we extract from the infinite query will give us a false value. So these two items are tightly coupled. So these are all the new items that we're going to use for our infinite scrolling pattern. I know it's a lot to take in, but most of it's pretty self-explanatory when you look at it individually. So first things first, we do not pass the page from the state anymore. Since we already have the initial page param set here, we can get rid of the page state and also remove the param from the get post function. So I can just directly call it like so. Now inside the query function, I'll show you what the page param now looks like that you automatically get from the infinite query. So inside this function, I'll just console log the page. So if I go back to the browser and go to with infinite query and open up the console, let's just ignore these errors for now. And yeah, you can see here that this is what we are console logging inside the fetch function. Now we are back to getting the actual number of the page, which is set to one initially. The get next page param gets you the next page param. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Okay. Based on previous data, if the previous page had no values returned, that means there are no more pages left. 
So we can use this logic to get the next page param. So instead of this console log statement here, I just replace it with the logic that I just mentioned. The last page will have all the posts inside that page. If the length of that page is zero, that means there are no more posts left. So if that is the case, then we'll simply return null or else we'll return all pages dot length plus one. So return the next page as null if the last page had no values else return the length of all the pages plus one. So the length of the all pages array is going to give you the topmost page right now. If I just add one to it, that will give me the number for the next page. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, the data object itself had a change in its structure. We get the pages array and the page params array, and we need to display the content that's present inside each page in the pages array. So what I'll do is I'll flatten the pages array. So since it is an array of all the pages and each page again is an array of posts, I'll flatten the array of pages into an array of posts. And in the end, I'll iterate over this post array. So let me just get the posts. Also, let me just comment this section out because the page is not defined here anywhere in the component. So it's going to give me an error. And now if I go back to the browser and just reload this, I at least get the first page of posts. So now to fetch the next page of items, just for the time being, I'll create a button whose on click will fetch the new items. We'll add the infinite scroll feature soon, but that is not a concept related to react query. We need to first figure out how to get the next page items. And that definitely is related to react query. So the older pagination buttons that I have, Instead of these buttons, I'll only have a single button that says load more and on click of this button, I'll call the fetch next page function that we have extracted from use infinite query. Now, if I go back to the browser and try to click on the load more button, it should ideally get me the next page of items. So let me just open the network tab. I'll clear this. And if I click on this load more button, this gets me So I had actually forgot to use page param instead of just page in this URL. Now, if I go back and try to click on load more, you'll see that we get the next page of items. And if you notice after the 10 seconds stale time, it will fetch all the pages again to keep the data up to date. So now since the stale time is up, just to show you, I'll switch between applications and I'll come back to this browser. And you'll see that it not only fetches the most recent page, but fetches all the older pages as well. So I'll go to VS code and then I'll come back to the browser. You see that page one, page two, page three, and page four, all the four calls were triggered to keep the data in sync. Also, if I go till page 10, which is the final page in this data set, since it only has hundred posts, you'll see that it does go to page 11, but after that it stops fetching. I'll go to the very last page. Now I'm on the page 10. I click on load more. It does trigger a page 11 API call, but it won't get any response because there are no items left. So now there won't be any subsequent API calls. Yeah, you see that page 11 is the last call. Even if I click on load more multiple times, it's not going to make any more requests. The reason behind this is because the get next page param returned null function that we have here returned null. And hence the has next page is now set to false. We can also conditionally hide the load more button itself based on the has next page property. So if there are no more pages left, then, then we just simply hide the button. I'll just add a condition here. If this is true, only then show me the button. One more edge case that I would like to handle is to disable the button when the next page is being fetched because accidentally clicking on it twice could mess with the data since since the same cache store is being used for all of these pages. So let me just disable the button when is fetching next page is set to true. I'll save this. I'll reload the page. And if I click on load more, <clears throat> now you cannot see it here, but when it's making the API call and fetching the data items, 
the button will be disabled. I can actually show you by slowing down the network. And now if I click on load more, you see that you don't see the kill me. You don't see the pointer icon anymore. You see. So this was one way of pagination using the load more button. Now let's convert this into an infinite scroller. Now the way infinite scrollers work is that they have an element at the bottom of the page. When that element is inside the viewport, this means we have reached the end of the list. So bring in the next page of items. So to check if this element is in the viewport, we need an observer. And if you have watched my series on JavaScript observers, you'll realize that I'm talking about the intersection observer. So in short, an intersection observer checks if an element intersects the viewport and whenever it does, you are allowed to run a callback function. So in this example, we can have an invisible div at the bottom of the page. The moment we get to the bottom of the page, this div will be in the viewport. The intersection observer will notice this and let us know that the element is in the viewport. So you get to run a callback. Our callback would be to fetch the next page of items. I won't be using the bare bones intersection observer. Instead, there's a package called react intersection observer that will make things much more simpler for us. So let's just install it. PNPM add react intersection observer. Once it's installed, we'll use a hook called use in view provided by this package. This hook exposes a bunch of items, but we'll only need two. So at the top here, I'll just use the hook. The first one is the ref, which will be the reference to the div element at the bottom. The second one is a Boolean flag called in view that will tell us if the div element is in the viewport or not. So let me just extract those two items. First one is ref and the second one is the Boolean flag in view. We can pass in some options to this hook as well, but that won't be required for this example. At the bottom, I'll just add this div element that we'll use to check if we reach the bottom of the list. We will not be needing this button anymore, so I'll just comment it out. And to this div, I'll pass the ref that we get from the use in view hook. I'll just give it some styles just so that we are able to see when we actually get to the div or the bottom of the list. And I'll save this. I'll still keep the has next page condition because on the last page, we don't really need the div element anymore. So it doesn't make sense to have it in the DOM. I'll add a use effect at the top to keep a track on the in view flag over here. Let me just create a use effect and the dependency is going to be in view. For now, let me just console log a statement. So now if I go back to the browser, let me just set this back to no throttling. I'll clear everything. I'll reload the page as well. Okay, so I'm on the top of the page. Now, if I go to the bottom of this page, you should ideally see a blue colored div. Yeah, you see it here. If I open up the console, you see that we get this console log statement as well. So by default, it was false, which means that the div element was not inside the viewport. So it was returning false initially. But when this div element actually did come inside the viewport, we get the value of in view flag as true. If I go up again, you'll see that it's set to false again. If I go back down, you see that the value is set to true. So the observer for us is working fine. So now all I need to do is check if the in view is true. If that is the case, then directly fetch the next page. So let me just reload this one more time. The div element is outside of this view. So the in view flag is set to false. I'll slowly scroll down and we will get to the bottom of the page. And the moment that happens, you'll see that a new network request is made. The scroll bar has now shortened, which means that we have more number of data items inside this page. So now it's again out of the viewport. I'll actually open up the network tab. So we have two page calls right now. This is for page one and this is for page two. Now again, let me scroll to the bottom. And the moment it hits the div or the div comes inside the viewport, a new request is triggered. So this is what we wanted an infinite scrolling example 
So whenever we get to the bottom of the page, it will make an API call for us and it will get the next batch of items. Yeah, so with that, we have built a basic infinite scroller example using the use infinite query hook and an intersection observer. This video introduced a lot of new items, especially with respect to infinite queries. So try watching this video a couple of times to understand everything thoroughly. Also try to play around this example and see if you can find any edge cases that I might have missed. If you want to learn more about the intersection observer, I have a separate video available, which I'll link in the description. Also do subscribe to the channel to get more content like this. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.